Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Dante Jones, owner of 772 Mobile Detail and representing Hustle Harder Than Next. And today I have a very important video for you guys to cover how I'm innovating my detailing business here in 2024. The goal of this video is to make very clear what has made my detailing business successful over the past three years that I've been in business, as well as what are some things I'm gonna be trying to implement going forward to continue seeing growth in my business as well. So. I'll be giving extreme transparency as I like to do on this channel as to what exact steps that I take in developing my business as far as the logo, the presentation aspects, my thank you letters, my business shirts, all these things that have added to the success of my business. I want to get into great depth about so you can take my ideas and run with them to hopefully make yourself more successful. For the sake of entertainment, I'm going to be adding in some detailing footage here and there just to keep you guys entertained as I'm touching on certain points in this video. But if you want more in-depth knowledge about my process, the chemicals I'm using, the supplies I'm using, this isn't necessarily the video for that. You can check the description box below to see some of the products I like, but you can also check out a series that I like to call Come Detail With Me, where I go through various scenarios, various details, and provide you great insight into the products that I'm using and the approach I'm taking with the given vehicle at hand. So not every vehicle requires the same approach in my business. I do diversify my approach in a way that makes things a little bit easier and more time efficient. And I like to explain these strategies in great detail to help you guys do the same thing in your business because time is money. So if you want that sort of content, check out my Come Detail With Me series. But for now, let's talk about the task at hand. Before I can get into how I'm innovating my business going forward, it makes sense to talk about what I've done in the past that maybe will help you guys right now. So let me get into the origins of my business and talk about some of the things I did to get things off the ground. Now I have a lot of content to speak on in this video, so be sure to check out the description box below to find the timestamps that I've listed out for you guys. Not all this information is applicable or useful to all the viewers of this video, but if you have a specific thing you want to learn about at greater depth, check out the description box for the timestamps and go right to that section of the video just so you can optimize your time and get right back to work if you are busy. Now we can't do anything with our business without a business logo right so I did pay someone $50 to create a logo which I did not like and he actually made another revised one and I also didn't like that one either. No refund or anything I just told him hey I'm not really digging this I'm just gonna do it myself. So I was making $12 an hour at the time and that was about five hours of work to me so I felt like I did put money to waste at that moment in time but I was doing whatever it took to make my business a reality right. So with my free time at the hotel front desk job, I was able to sit down and learn how PicMonkey works. And I really came out the other side with a really nice logo after hours and hours of practice and figuring out how to bypass the limitations within PicMonkey. These limitations existed because I was not about to pay more money to subscribe to PicMonkey. And they do give you a, a bunch of features to start off with, even on the free version, but Paying for it would have probably made my life a little bit easier, but I was balling on a budget. I was not making that much money and I was spending my last dollars on each and every check on trying to develop my business slowly but surely. Now, this isn't going to be a course on logo creation or anything like that, but I'm pretty much showing you guys the process that I took to create my logo. And I can't tell you the exact steps that I took each step of the way because this was a couple of years ago and I don't have access to the file that holds my actual logo i forgot the password to that account so that's long gone but that being said i pretty much put circles within themselves i created some outlines using those circles i then went to google and looked up water backgrounds and i'm pretty sure it's the exact same one that i used three years ago so i'm gonna go ahead and download this one again i fill one of these circles with this image to give it that watery background so you just hit fill with image on the left side here on your desktop or laptop computer access your image and then go ahead and paste it in and now you get that watery background so there are a couple more things that i did to kind of give my logo more character added steam added gradients to the text and the other black centerfold or centerfold center background for the center circle there so i wanted to give my logo some character some life now after my logo was complete at 21 years of age, I felt like a little kid again. I felt like my dream was finally becoming a reality, but I knew I had a lot more work to go through. I did register my business as an LLC as my very next step. This isn't quite necessary for everyone, but 
I'm an overthinker and I overprepare. I usually think about the things that could go wrong. So I mitigate those things that could go wrong by being productive ahead of time. And with that same mentality, before I had even a single piece of equipment or a single chemical in my arsenal, I then created my business cards. Using Vistaprint.com, I slapped my logo onto the uncoated cards here. I've only used the regular uncoated cards. I have not upgraded my business cards at all. Even my newer ones aren't upgraded per se. And it's more so just a cost cutting maneuver by me. But the reason I do favor Vistaprint over other sites is the customization. I'm very particular about my fonts, my letter spacing, where everything is. The software, websites, whatever it's called, that allow me to customize things to the highest degree is typically what I go for because once I envision something, I just gotta make it happen. And if I don't have something that I'm satisfied with, I never settle for less. So I literally sat here doing these cards probably for five hours straight, still at the hotel and nothing better to do obviously, but it was very productive and I ended up getting cards that I really liked for a while. But recently I upgraded my cards and I'll be talking about that later on in the presentation portion of this video. But for now, let's stay on topic with where we are in my business development. So we got business cards now. My next two focuses was getting on Google and also getting a website. So I'm not gonna talk too deep about how to get a Google My Business site set up because it would take a very long time and I don't want to spread out this video too, too much. But definitely do that if you haven't already. Set up a Google page so people can find you, people can leave reviews and discover you a lot easier on apps like Safari and Google Chrome. So stepping beyond that point, I did make a website using a website builder called Strikingly. And once again, this falls under the category of highly customizable. So I really enjoy using the site because I can edit the fonts exactly how I want to. I can build everything exactly how I envision and I can place things pretty much where I'd like to. There are some limitations obviously to any software, but compared to the other site builders I used, I find that strikingly for me was the most suitable. And it also has a lot of different features you can add on to the website as well. The most important feature on the website is the ability for prospects to fill out a form. So I can write out any question. I can format a question to be a checkbox or to be written out. You can really customize your form to the highest degree on strikingly as well so i set up some questions for each and every prospect that go to my website and i also provide links above the form so they can quickly view my packages and make a educated decision on what they would like for me once a form is submitted i get an email straight to my iphone i open up the email i copy the phone number I hit send message and I copy and paste a message that I have written out on my notes. So I basically say, hey, thanks for submitting a form on my website. I just want to make sure I would have access to water and power so I can work with you. But if those things are all good to go, just let me know if I reach the right number, we can get started on a quote. And usually that will get responded to with a yes, I have water and power, you reach the right number. And then we can start talking about a quote. So you can see the framework coming together on how I acquire clients. It's through Google, it's through my website, it's through my business cards. I have ways of getting clientele that can be acquired without me making a post or doing anything. And these are things that are necessary unless you wanna gain all your clientele from just text or just messages or just phone calls. You need to have a way for people who want to work with you to discover more about you. And my website's a really big part. I really go in depth, especially on the about me page or about us page. I go deep into my philosophy about business. I want to clarify who I am to these people before they pay me their hard earned money. And you shouldn't expect people to want to work with you just because you call yourself or you label yourself a detailer. You have to give yourself or give your clientele and your prospects reasons to believe in you because it gives you a much higher probability of selling to the client before you even meet them, right? If the client is sold on you as a person and you as a business owner, they are much more likely to say yes, 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 instead of maybe, maybe, maybe or no. Now that I've covered what I did at the start of my business to get off the ground, we can talk about the things I'm doing currently as well as what I wanna do going forward to continue innovating and making my business a little bit more special. So 
I'm gonna be getting into how I create my thank you letters. And we're first gonna start on canva.com. And I'll also be telling you guys the supplies that are needed to do this sort of thing. So do not worry, just pay attention. And if you wanna save some money on ordering things like thank you letters, and you wanna spice things up a little bit, definitely feel free to just copy what I'm doing in this video. I even go as far as showing you the font sizes and the font type here on canva.com. So you can easily get the same exact results that I got, or you can alter it a bit to put your own flair and style on it. So in addition to the thank you letters, I also leave behind a little note that describes what I put in those blue spray bottles that I leave behind for my clientele. And I'll do that just in case I don't have time to talk to the client or the client's in a rush. I want them to know that the cleaner is safe on all surfaces is good for things like bugs on the front end, fresh bugs, not bugs that have been on there for a while, any small spills you might have, bird poop, things like this are really key areas for clients when it comes to maintaining their vehicles and i try to point to that on these notes so they actually use the sprayer and a lot of my clients actually do and at times i do replace the spray bottles over time but before i show you guys how i fill those spray bottles and what exactly i do we're going to print out these thank you letters plus the spray bottle note on my hp desk jet 3637 so you can use any printer obviously but i like this one it's been pretty reliable for me my mom got it for me for christmas a couple of years ago and i didn't use it for the first year but i was like okay i have my business now and we can start using it so it ended up coming in handy and now i use it almost every week so thanks mom after printing out the thank you letter and the other note we are going to laminate them so you can see the pouches that i'm using for this scotch laminator i got it from target i forget how much it was i think it was around 50 or 60 dollars and Honestly, it's been amazing to me. I've been using it for a little over two years now, and it's a very nice little machine. It takes about two minutes or so on average to heat up to the operating temperature. And after that, you go in and put the laminated papers in. It'll come out the other side and we'll be ready to use our paper cutter to cut the thank you letter into squares. The towels I've been ordering for the past three years for this sole purpose of giving it to my client is actually Amazon basic towels. So they're 12 by 16 inches. I'm sure you can use a different brand towels just as long as the dimensions and sizes of the towels are the same. I don't think it'll impact the final look. So we're gonna start folding this towel. We have it nice and spread out evenly. We're gonna fold this bottom long side inward by about a half inch to an inch we're then gonna take that folded edge and flip the towel over so the towel is now face down with that folded edge that we initially did still intact we're then gonna fold one side of this towel in about halfway we're gonna do the other side about halfway as well it'd be a lot easier if i had two hands to show you guys but i just have one but if i can do this with one hand you can definitely do it with two now we're gonna tuck this top pocket into the bottom pocket so very key step there, pay attention to exactly what I'm doing. After you do that, smooth out the towel the best you can. We're gonna do another half fold here, press it down, and then another half fold. So now we have the thank you towel intact. And to make it a little bit more sturdy, you can add in a piece of tape. So when you're driving or when you're getting ready to put the towel in the car, it doesn't fall all apart. Before I started using tape on these towels, it was kind of annoying having all the hard work I prepared fall apart and having to be in the hot sun and refold these towels. It's not something you want to do. So be sure to add in some tape and be sure to, when you're folding, make it tight. All right. Make this towel very tight so it stays in nice and sturdy when you deliver it to your client and it looks professional. Now we can tie everything together. You can see how I took you all from the first step of just making my logo to getting my first business cards to getting my new business cards, which you're seeing right now with the QR codes on it and how it ties into my thank you towels right now. So I have a new business card. The blue one is my main one that I give out to new prospects. The QR code goes right to my website and straight to the form. So there's no questions. There's no needing to text me. Just go to the form, submit your information. And I will text you so we can start discussing a quote. I then also offer my YouTube card so you can go straight to my YouTube and hopefully subscribe. And then the last one is my gray card. This one is a new one and the QR code actually goes straight to my Square site. So they can view my calendar, view my openings. I use Square to book all my clients manually. And that same calendar also functions with the clients who wanna book online. So if a day is blocked off, they won't be able to book that day.
while I wrap up this towel, you can see the finished product right here and how it looks in the client's vehicles as well. It's a very professional touch by the time I'm done. Alongside the thank you letter, I also leave behind steering wheel covers and shifter covers as well. A lot of people may think that it's a little bit overkill, but it's something in my business that I prioritize. My philosophy is going above and beyond. So even if someone thinks I'm doing too much, I'd rather be doing too much than too little. It's just my brand, right? As a business owner, I think that you should lean into your extremes, right? What are the top things you are passionate about? After being in the hotel industry for five years, it was beaten into my mind that customer service is everything. Customer service is the end all be all in how you grow your business. So what did I do? I lean into that philosophy. I lean into that extreme and I go all in with it, right? I can be a mediocre detailer, for example, and lean into one of my passions to a high level to set myself apart and still do good business right if you are someone that just loves to make cars glossy right you love to be that guy that has the best wax service or the best carpet shampooing service or the best steam cleaning service lean into what makes you excited to get up and go to work in the morning for me it happens to be customer service and presentation i just love my presentation i'm obsessed with it i put my all into it Whatever makes you feel that way, how I feel about presentation, lean into it and see if it helps your business at all. Next, let's cover how I make my spray bottles. I won't get too, too long-witted with this one. I'm just gonna show you guys real quick what I do. So I put some O&R mixed with distilled water in these spray bottles and I don't dilute it as much as recommended by O&R. I really like that blue appearance and this chemical or solution isn't going to damage anything no matter how strong it is in my opinion if you have a different experience definitely let me know in the comments but as far as i know i don't really know of any circumstance or situation where onr damaged anything even when not diluted very much so i can quote unquote boost the power of this onr even though onr really isn't a powerful chemical so to speak to give it that nice blue pop that matches my logo really well so I ordered these spray bottles off of Amazon. The typical pack that I order is 22 at a time, but it's currently unavailable. So I pulled up a different one that's pretty much identical to the spray bottles that I get, and it comes in a 30 pack. So I usually order about 44 at a time, 44 to 46 at a time. But in this situation, I'd probably go for 30 just to get started. I don't give these bottles out to every single client I work with, but if it's a new customer, a new client that I really want to impress, I will definitely leave one behind for them. You still there? Good, I just wanna make sure. So we talked about the origins of my business. We also talked about my presentation and why I lean into it so heavily. And now I wanna talk about my current situation as far as my marketing goes, what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to accomplish in the market that I'm in. So I'm still working on acquiring more maintenance clientele. And I find that getting someone committed to a one month at a time plan isn't always the most effective way to go with clients. Now, the beginning stages, you just take what you get, right? If you want someone, if someone hits you up and they want a once a month service, you give it to them because you need that opportunity. If someone wants bi-weekly, you give it to them because you need the opportunity. But I'm at the point where the opportunities aren't necessarily a necessity. I don't have to accept all the work that comes to me, nor do I have to be so motivated to put everyone that I work for on a monthly plan. Some people are overly pressured by that idea and feel like that it's not a good fit for them. So if I offer something a little bit less aggressive to them, they may be more likely to accept a maintenance plan with me. So what can we do? If you remember a couple minutes ago in this video, I showed you guys that great maintenance card. This card is called my on-demand maintenance card. So what I'm doing now is I'm giving everyone this card and I'm saying, hey, within the next 90 days, if you book with me again, I'll give you complimentary wax. I'll give you complimentary UV protection and other services to bring your vehicle even further back to life. And if you book within this 90 day time period, because I've seen the vehicle and I know what to expect, because I protected the vehicle to a high level, I can get this job done in about an hour 15, an hour and 30 minutes, as opposed to three to four hours at the initial prep for maintenance detail, right? So this kind of incentivizes the client to book with me again, because you're not gonna get complimentary wax from somewhere else. You're not gonna get complimentary UV protection from somewhere else. And at a certain degree, I may be shooting myself in the foot as far as the value goes, but at the same time, the repetitive customer base that I have 
is able to give me consistent income. And that's really what I'm aiming for, consistency. This also gives me a lot more freedom and flexibility because I'm not sitting there having to text and coordinate with my clients. I don't have to ask any questions. I don't have to say, hey, is Tuesday okay with you? And then wait for a reply. And then, you know, 9 p.m. at night when I'm laying in bed, get another text saying, okay, yeah, I think that day will be good or changing that day would be more necessary. I think that this is a great system for me to develop because over time, as more people get used to booking on the apps, I can spend less time working on my phone and more time enjoying my off time. So all in all, this system is gonna be a win-win. It's still developing, it's still gaining some traction, it's still very fresh to me. But so far, I do recommend some sort of system like this where you give your clients an opportunity to choose to be an on-demand client or a monthly client, a bi-weekly client, give them the freedom to do so. Some clients don't wanna worry about having to book th themselves on a calendar and that's totally okay. I'll do it for you and I'll keep doing the same things I've been doing for my other clients if they see fit. But the more people I can get on the maintenance plan that automatically book themselves, the less work I'm doing. And eventually, once I'm big enough, I can offload some of those clients that are booking automatically to an employee where you show up to the job and you can't mess up anything, bro. Developing this on-demand maintenance client system has taken most of my attention to start off this year, but I still want to work on my marketing skills. So definitely stay tuned for how I continue growing my business because this isn't it. I'm gonna continue trying to find more ceramic coating clients, more paint correction clients, more new clients overall. But as a basis to have a successful business or at least a business that's able to, to survive in this wild economic time where things are inflated crazy, you need a base of income that you can depend on and rely on in order to support your business, support your rent, support your car payments, whatever it is that you need to pay for. You need something there that you can look at and say, hey, unless I'm sick or hurt, I will have a client that I'm able to depend on. I can show up and they'll have the car unlocked and ready to go for me. They're gonna text me back. They're gonna let me know if they want to cancel before it's too late for me to replace them. These are the things that I prioritize in my business as a foundation and therefore I'm able to survive and expand from there. There's levels to this and I'm not trying to sound egotistical when I say that. I'm just saying literally there's levels to this where once you pass that level of steady income, you can then expand and really chase your dream of developing the business to a higher level. All that being said, guys, I feel like I covered a bunch of topics and information in this video. So if you got any value out of it, please hit that like button. Please comment if you enjoyed it. I've been seeing a lot of growth in this community and I'm very thankful for the positive comments I've been seeing recently. So I'll do a better job at getting back to you guys when I'm not so busy. But for now, stay blessed, hustle harder than the next. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Dante out.